Welcome. Here we are. It's uh, Thursday evening. Hatha Yoga Flow. I just said good to be back. So yeah, just make sure you've got some space around you. Hopefully a reasonably quiet space. Distractions turned off. Water. Um, cushions, blankets. Whatever you, uh, whatever you might. We don't need anything in particular this evening. You might want to work with a block. Don't really need anything in particular. And as always, as we go through the practice, please do listen to your bodies, not what the ego wants you to do. Be gentle and kind to yourselves. Use your breath. We're going to start in a seated position, so you might want to pop yourself on a cushion or a block. We're going to start with a little bit of breath work, um, but before we do, let's just connect and arrive in this moment. So when you're ready, just rolling the shoulders back and down, nice straight spine, we're trying to align the head with the spine, so gently tucking in the chin, we're not dropping the chin down onto the chest, just imagine lengthening the back of the neck. So imagine something pulling from the crown of the head as you just tuck in that chin, shoulders roll back and down. And then when you're already closing the eyes or just softening the gaze. And allow your awareness to come to the breath. it's comfortable and available to you, breathing in and out through the nose. Noticing your energy, beginning to relax the body, relax the mind. Softening the jaw and the shoulders. As you gently follow the journey of the breath, perhaps noticing the chest, the rib cage, and the abdomen as it gently rises and falls with each inhale and exhale. body soften a little bit more with each breath and if you can allowing yourself to let go of anything that may have happened so far today this week or maybe happening later and a gentle reminder that we can use the breath as our anchor to keep us in the here and now will be a focus this week as well, being present. Allowing those thoughts, those feelings to drift away with the breath. We're not ignoring them, we're detaching from them. Noticing and observing, rather than becoming involved. And the breath will help us. Do some grounding breath work as we hold the Prithvi Mudra. So the ring finger and the thumb will touch on each hand, resting the hands on the legs, the lap, wherever it's comfortable. We're just going to do a few rounds of counting breath. So inhaling for four counts, exhaling for six counts. And as always, as you know, you can decrease or increase those counts or just uh, breathe in and out through the nose as you choose. If you're joining in, 
Let's take a breath together in through the nose and out through the nose. And inhale, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four, five, six. Inhale, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four, five, six. Inhale, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four, five, six. Inhale, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four, five, six. Inhale, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four, five, six. Inhale, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four, five, six. Inhale, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four, five. Final round. Inhale, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four, five, six. Allowing the breath to drop back into a natural rhythm and continuing to observe. you can set your intention here. My intention for you is to work with the energies of the eclipse season. We have the solar eclipse coming on Saturday and the lunar eclipse at the end of the month. So we'll be focusing on grounding, being present, whilst balancing all of the energy centers of the body. Soles of the feet come together, heels come nice and close in towards the groin. If it's comfortable, grabbing hold of those feet, spine nice and straight. Let's take a little flutter, just breathing evenly in and out through the nose. And you can focus your awareness if you choose down into the root chakra, into the base of the spine. Inhale, 
out to gently release and rise back up. And then just relaxing the hands, just take some shoulder rolls. Inhaling as we roll the shoulders up towards the ears, exhaling as we roll them back and down. Change direction, making a few the other way. Inhale the shoulders all the way up. Exhale, roll them back and down. Beautiful. Release those legs, give them a little shake out. Continue warming up, but we're going to come round to um, tabletop. Okay, knees underneath the hips, hands underneath the shoulders. And then the next breath out, we're just going to slide that right knee forward towards the top of the mat. The right knee comes forward, place the right hand on the mat. Um, just in front of that right knee, you might need to move it as we come into this. Left toes are tucked under, start to lift the left knee and turn onto the side. You might need to tuck the right toes under. Inhale the left arm all the way up, exhale, take it over. Let's take a few breaths, reaching with those left fingers. Breathe, breathe, breathe. Stretch into the side of the body. Gently release that left hand down. We're pushing up and back into down dog with the hamstrings and the calves. And let's take a little walk with the dog. To get into the ankles and the feet as well. Pushing the weight up and back. Pushing one heel down and then the other heel. Next exhale, oh, so let's do both heels lift on an inhale first, and then exhale, push those heels down. Another breath in, and as we breathe out, let's drop back to tabletop position, do that little side stretch on the other side. Say so left knee slides forwards, left hand pops in front, left toes might want to tuck them under. Lifting up and coming onto the side, inhaling the right arm all the way up. Can be a bit tricky on the balance, I'm actually on my fingertips. Exhale, reach over and take a few breaths into the side of the body. And then release that right arm down. Pushing up and back into your down dog. Walking the dog. Inhale, both heels lift. Exhale, push those heels down. And then while we're here, inhale, right leg lifts up, up, up and away. Take a little circle with the right foot a few times one way and a few times the other way. Release, let's do the same on the other side, lifting left leg, three-legged dog. Circle a few times one way. And a few times the other way. Release. Drop to the knees. Sit back on the heels. Into your balasana child's pose. Take a few breaths. Moving up into the higher chakras a little bit. Inhale, let's snake that head all the way through to the top of the mat. <clears throat> Excuse me, keeping it low. Push into the palms of the hands. Come into your cobra, open through the sacral. So the plexus, the heart, the throat. Or you can stay on the forearms for sphinx. Next exhale, push up and back into your child's pose again, balasana. Let's do that one more time. Inhale, snake the head all the way through to the top of the mat. Push up into full half baby cobra or even a sphinx, relaxing the shoulders. And then this time, push up and back into your down dog. Good, so going back to the right leg, right leg lifts up, 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 and away. 
exhale as you step it through to the top of the mat, in between the hands, inhale, I just want to drop the hips for a moment, exhale, left leg joins, hang out in your Uttanasana for a few breaths, apologies for that noise, the cats are having a fight on the piano, and as we start to come up, Come up gently and slowly, arms relaxed to begin, inhaling, and then take those arms nice and wide, open the chest, squeeze the shoulder blades, maybe a gentle back bend, exhale, bring the arms forward, drop the chin down onto your chest, let's do a couple more of those, inhale, open, exhale, arms come forwards, let's do one more, inhaling to open, time as we inhale take those arms all the way up reach and stretch through the whole of the body and then exhale big circle with those arms coming all the way around and down nice start with a nice little grounding sequence so feet to hip width you're going to be at the top of your mat begin with a balance so hands can be on the waist or you can bring them straight into Namaste if you want to enjoy. So let's spread the feet. I just want to move the soles of the feet around on the mat, make sure that you feel nice and stable. <clears throat> Turn on that core. Tucking the pelvis in slightly. We'll start with the right leg, say lifting right heel. We're going into tree pose, right knee out to right side. Find the inside of the left ankle. You might want to just stay with the fingers at the toes connected or you might want to begin to lift the leg and take it to wherever feels comfortable for you let's try to keep the hips forwards and really open that knee out you might want to just soften the left knee a little bit try not to grip with those toes let's focus the eyes use the core and you could stay with hands on the waist or you could bring them into another stay or you can take them up and anybody who wants to have a little go at Windy Tree you can have a go at Windy Tree just an option back of right hand comes onto the right thigh and we're a bit windy over to the right so we start leaning over and breathing for five four you guys stay there three two one, just come out of that windy tree if you're in it, bring the hands to Namaste, start to release that right leg, a big breath in, and as we breathe out, step it all the way back on the mat, heel goes down, so left knee is bent, inhale, turn the body, so opening out to the hips, bring the arms to shoulder height, palms facing down, exhale, bend the left knee, drop the hips into your warrior two, looking over the left fingers, spine, upper body is upright, hips are low, making sure the knee is not going over the toes, and each time we exhale to see if we can drop a little bit lower and just get a sense of that grounding, stabilising stance, and then we can go into a little extended side angle if anybody wants to bring that left arm down, you might just want to pop it on the left thigh to begin take the right arm up. This is where if you wanted to you could have a play around with the block. If anybody does want to reach the left fingers a little bit further down towards either a block or the mat. Trying to keep the hips low, breathing. And next exhale, let's come all the way down with those arms, plant them either side of the left foot, lift the right heel, turn the toes, take a breath in as we breathe out. Left leg joins the right, so we're in plank position or three quarter plank. And then next exhale, let's chaturanga the chin, chest, belly. Inhale to cobra. Exhale, push up and back to your down dog. And then inhale, left leg lifts up, 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 and away. Exhale, step it through to the top of the mat. 
Exhale, right leg joins. Hang out in your Uttanasana for a few breaths. This time we'll come up with a big circle. So coming all the way up as we inhale, big circle with the arms. Bring the palms together above the head. Exhale into Namaste. And we can stay in our balance or we can take the hands onto your waist. So again, focusing those eyes, just making sure you feel nice and stable through the soles of the feet, turning on the core. And then lifting the left heel, left knee goes out to left side. Finding our Brixana tree pose on the left. And then just making sure wherever you place that foot, that it's not on the knee joint. And um, also remembering that we're doing this for a sense of growth not to please the ego, so take it to wherever it's comfortable. Yes, somebody Jane, hopefully she should come back in. And then if you want to, you can take the arms out. Remember, you could just stay with the hands on the waist. I find it a lot more difficult on this side. I think I've got a much tighter hip on the right. We're trying to open out that knee. And if we want to, we can take the left hand onto the left thigh a bit of a windy tree. Maybe. Again, breathing and focusing the eyes. Well done. Five, you stay there. Four, three, two, one. And just bringing those palms back in front of the heart, start to release that left leg. A big breath in as we breathe out, step it all the way back. On that heel goes down. Right knee is bent, inhale, turn to open out to the hips and bring the arms to shoulder height, palms facing down. Exhale, bend that right knee, drop low into your Virabhajanasana to warrior two, a bit like stretching the hips. You guys stay there, I'm just going to come and take the sound off just in case Jane makes it back in. So remember each time you exhale, you're dropping a little bit lower. Quarter plank, chaturanga, the slower the better. Inhale into your cobra. And this time, as we exhale, sit back into your child's pose. Take a few your way round to the sit bones, take some water if you want some. We've got some fun coming up later with some of the higher chakras so we'll be on the floor for a little bit now. Oh there's Jane, wonderful. Legs go long in a seated position. Sorry bear with somebody's having You. You're back with us. I'm sure you finished off that sequence yourself there, Jane. You can always have the recording. It's handy. So we're on the sit bones, legs along, flexing those feet. Let's take a big circle as we inhale, arms come all the way up and reach. Exhale into our classic full fold. Just take a few breaths here, focusing on relaxing the shoulders, trying to engage. Quads, 
really point those toes back towards the face. Sometimes that's really all you need to do to feel the stretch. Lengthen the spine, use the breath. Focusing on the sacral and the solar plexus here. Gently come up, relax in the arms, find nice and straight, exhale, roll those shoulders back and down. Bend both of the knees. Again, spine is nice and straight, arms come out in front. Take a breath in. And as we breathe out, drop the chin down onto the chest, squeeze the belly, start to roll back until you feel those tummy muscles turning on. Option here, you can lift one leg and the other leg. Try not to bend the knee, you're lifting from the hip. Or you can come into Navasana Yoga Pose. We can do a little bit of twisting, twisting. Or you can stay just holding Navasana, of course. If you uh, want to harness that solar plexus energy to boost the immune system, which I definitely do. We're going to, what did I do last night? Extend the right leg, take the left arm up and sort of look over, sort of underneath the left armpit and then come back and then exhale, extend the left leg, right arm up and try and to actually twist the upper body as you do it. So let's do a few of those, actually turning the upper body, looking underneath the armpit as you take that opposite arm up. Remember you can just stay with options one or two if you want to. Working the solar plexus is a great way to boost the immune system. Let's do a couple more on either side if we want to. And focus on twisting as well. It's a great way to work so plexus. And then when you've had enough, you can always do more if you want to. Release, just placing the soles of the feet right down on the mat. Well done. Let's stretch out the belly and continue with that solar plexus. So legs can come long, you've got the option to have a slight bend in them, feet together, toes pointed, hands come underneath the bottom, fingers pointing towards the feet, the palms are down, and then bring the forearms down. Try to guide the elbows underneath the shoulders, we're trying to tuck those forearms far enough, as far as under as is comfortable, taking a breath in. And as we breathe out, squeeze the shoulder blades, push the chest up towards the ceiling. Again here, you might want to use a block for the crown of the head. If not, bringing the crown of the head down to the mat. So we're working even further up as well with the solar plexus, but also the heart now. The throat. The third eye and the crown. With the destroyer of diseases pose. Stressing. Let's take a few more breaths. And then when you're ready to release, gently lift the head first, release the arms. Allow that upper back, uh, sorry, the whole of the back to come down and then hug the knees into the chest. Take a little roll from side to side. One final twist here in solar plexus. So keeping the knees hugged into the chest, relaxing head and shoulders, bring the arms to cactus position. Get a nice opening through the chest, the shoulders, the heart as well. So breath in as we breathe out, let those knees drop over to the right. And then just see how much of the cactus arms you can keep down on the other side, maybe looking in the opposite direction. If it feels too much with the knees, that high up, you can just lower them down a little bit for the twist. Take a few breaths, stretch into the shoulders and the chest, as well as twisting the spine, stimulating the solar plexus. And inhale, roll back to centre, keep the arms in cactus, exhale. 
roll it over to the other side and keep those knees tucked in towards the chest as much as is comfortable for you. Try and keep both shoulders down. Tabletop. And then when we're ready, I think we're all comfortable coming into it like this. Bring the knees nice and close together, feet close and close together. Sit back on the heels. Allow the head to drop down, bring the hands down by the feet into your restful child. Now we're going to do crown of the head the other way, opposite way to fish pose. So when you're ready, gently lifting the head, the chest might lift, have to lift up a little bit for this as well. And try and aim the crown of the head, so really tuck that chin in and start to bring the crown of the head down. And then grab hold of the heels, take a breath in as you breathe out, lift the hips. See if you can keep hold of those heels, stretch into the shoulders. Stretch into the back of the neck, stimulate the throat and the crown. And take a few breaths. Also good for the heart, the back of the heart space. You can breathe into the shoulder blades. Releasing, sit bones come back, come up slowly. It's okay to rest on knees for a moment, do so if not, come round off the sit bones and just have a straight spine for a few breaths. this one so if you have got a block you might want to give it a go some people might be very comfortable without one a hero pose varasana knees come nice and close together feet go out and then you can take that option then to either have a block nice and high or mid or low or you might find that your sit bones will come down onto the mat what we're aiming for, though, is for the feet not to be underneath the buttocks. The knees are together and the feet around. That's why, for me personally, I have to just have a little bit of support for the sit bones. And then when we've found our virasana, wherever we are, whatever support we've got, please look after those knees. Don't aggravate anything. Again, nice straight spine, just resting the hands wherever's comfortable. Your choice, you can have the eyes open or closed. We're just gonna stretch out that neck to continue with the throat chakra. So breath in as you breathe out, dropping the chin down onto the chest. And then just take some neck circles in your own time, inhaling as you roll that chin back, exhaling as you roll. direction whenever you're ready. Next time the chin lands down on the chest after you've done a few rounds gently lift that head back up to a neutral position and then for anybody that wants to whilst we're here <clears throat> in our hero pose 
And for those of us that want to, you can take a gentle back bend for a few breaths. Don't have to do this, you can just stay here or you can come out early, but you can walk the hands behind. I tend to have the fingers pointing in towards the sit bones, and maybe just start to bend the elbow. See how far it's comfortable to come back. Some people might be all the way down, some people just slightly down, some people not liking it at all. So do what feels right. And again, we can get a little opening through the throat chakra if we want to. It's a great stretch on the quads and the hip flexors. We want to try and keep the knees down and together if we can. So if they start to lift, if the knees start to lift, you'd probably come down a bit too far. I used to really not like that, but it's one of my new favourites. Because of my dodgy knees, but the years of yoga have helped my knees, so it's all good. Releasing if you have block or anything behind you. Lifting up. Back to tabletop position. Bring the forearms down. Elbows come underneath the shoulders. You can either interlink the fingers or bring the palms down. Tuck the toes under. Inhale. Exhale, push the hips up into your dolphin pose, Katasvanasana. And then just adjust if you choose, you can walk the feet a little bit closer. Great for the third eye and the crown. Also strengthening the shoulders, stretching the calves and the hamstring. A few more breaths. And then exhale, drop those knees, sit back into your child's pose. And then when you're ready, lifting back up to tabletop. So I would definitely recommend um, that you find a wall for this next bit if you're going to come to, um, we're going to do headstand, I might as well say. So if you enjoy throwing the legs up into the air, um, I am insured, but yeah, I'd rather that you didn't uh, hurt yourself and we're online so I can't come and rescue you. But I know a lot of you are very comfortable with doing this, so you're all adults. Um, I'm not going to go too crazy this evening because the uh, balance is a bit off after having this strange cold but anybody that wants to join in please feel free to find a wall and we don't have to go into full headstands we're just going to have a bit of fun and, and I've got a bit of time to have a bit of play around with this. So we're bringing the crown of the head down onto the mat it's got to be the crown and then make a triangle with the hands so I just bring my hands a little bit further back and wide so a triangle head is the top of the triangle and then the hands in the two corners and I've made um, little tables with my triceps, the elbows are pointing backwards. And if you haven't done this for a while, if you want to, you can just lift one knee, lift the other knee. I know there'll be some of you there that are already probably in a full headstand. If you just want to come with me and have a little mess around, because it's also stimulating the crown chakra. And if you feel comfortable with that, you might just want to test one knee on one tricep and then pop it back down and then do the other one. You might want to come onto the toes and just lift both the knees, see how that feels. And again here, maybe testing one knee on one tricep, etc. So you have a little mess around. Use the core. You need some strength in the wrists. Breathe. You can use the wall, but if you are using a wall, I would definitely recommend that you have a go at trying it from scratch rather than just uh, throwing the legs up because that'll strengthen the wrist as well. <sighs> Yay! Amazing. I'm just going to do one more because I quite enjoyed that feeling on my crown chakra where you guys are messing around. I haven't done one of these for ages. Really? I need to have a wall behind me just in case. Well, we've had a bit of a mess around. 
please take as much time as you choose when you decide to come out again just like we did with the um sangasara rabbit or hair pose yeah look at that yeah just make sure that you come out nice and gently look at those amazing So when you come out as well, I'm loving that, Jane. When you come out as well, just um, be still for a little while, breathe, and just feel the crown. Focus your awareness on the crown of the head. You need that look very, very stable and steady. We've had some nice grounding work to build us up to that. So well done, everybody. And take your time. If you've just come out of headstand and you need a few more moments, just stay there with a straight spine and breathe. And when you're ready, we're going to come and do a little bit of breath work. You might want to take some water. Make sure you've got all the clothing on. So we've been through the whole of the body, finishing at the crown. We've done a good few asanas for each chakra. Let's uh, do an all over balance breath work now. So some Nadi Shadana alternate nostril breath. To begin with, we might just want to reconnect with our energy, finding that comfortable position, rolling the shoulders back and down. Perhaps just resting the hands on the knees or in the lap. Allowing the awareness to come to the breath, breathing in and out through the nose. If you're joining me, alternate nostril breath is your dominant hand, index finger, middle finger sits, the tips of those fingers sit on the third eye, the space between the eyebrows, we use the thumb and the ring finger to open and close alternate nostrils. We're closing off one nostril, inhaling through an open nostril, swapping and exhaling. Inhaling through the same nostril. Swap and exhale. Inhale, same nostril. Swap, exhale. Inhale, same nostril. Swap, exhale. Inhale. Swap, exhale. Inhale. Swap, exhale. Keep going. As we do this breath work, let's focus on being present in the here and now. mind if we can just to be empty bringing perhaps awareness to the temperature of the breath 
maybe the difference between the temperature of the inhale and the exhale of the right and the left nostril. Allow yourself to be curious as an observer. Last few rounds in your own time, balancing the spheres of the brain, the right and left hemispheres. Cleansing the nasal passages of the respiratory system. Make your next round your final round. And then just breathe in and out through the nose. fingers and the toes, bring the palms together, and grab the palms, place the hands over the eyes and open the fingers, you open the eyes, rub the cheeks, throat, the knees, you close one way, and a few times the other way, wonderful, coming off block, push up, coming down, um, Two supply cricket stretches, but feel free to bring stuff with you, blankets ready for relaxation. Arms come out in front, take a breath in as we breathe out, drop the chin down onto the chest, squeeze the belly, and roll it down. Relaxing the head and shoulders when you get down there, walk those heels nice and close in towards the sit bones. Feet to hip width, knees to hip width. Arms down by the side of the body, roll the shoulders back and down, push that lower back down into the mat. Take a breath in, and as you breathe out, push the hips up, 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 and away. To your bridge, so to Vanda, Salamangasana. When you get up there, maybe you want to shuffle the shoulders in a bit more, perhaps even walking the feet in, trying to keep the heels connected. But don't forget about really squeezing the bottom, pushing the hips up, 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 strengthening the spine, relaxing the nerves. Releasing any remaining tension from the shoulders. Stretching the quads, the hip flexors. You can take your options maybe, reaching for the heels or interlinking the fingers. A couple more breaths. Exhale, roll it down one vertebrae at a time. Massaging the spine as you go down, hug the knees into the chest. A little roll if you want to. Just to counteract that strengthening for the back of the legs. Just take both of the legs up into the air, flex the feet, 
and just try and get nice straight legs. So this should be enough to feel a stretch. If you want a little bit more, you can reach for the toes or even just the legs if the arms don't reach and just stretch through the backs of those legs. The main thing is that the, you're desperately trying to point the toes down towards the face and get the nice straight legs and that's where you're going to feel the stretch. So if you've got long enough arms and straight enough legs, you might be able to grab one of the toes and even draw the legs further back towards you. Try and keep the shoulders relaxed though. Stay with the breath. And then start to bend the knees, let the legs go wide so the knees come to the outer edges of the chest, armpit area. Soles of the feet are still facing up towards the ceiling, hands come on the inside of the feet or ankles wherever you can grab into your happy baby. And a asana. You can take a little roll or be still. Remember you can counteract as well if you really want to feel into the hips. Push the feet up as you push them down with the hands, so you're pushing the feet up and back. So you counteract that with the hands down and the soles of the feet. Opening the lower back as well. And then relax and release. Wonderful, get yourself comfy, cozy, blankets, jumpers, etc. Winding your shavasana. Quartz pose if you choose. Or you can have the knees bent or constructive rest or whatever feels good for you in this moment. to gently close, and the gaze to soften, reconnecting with that familiar flow of breath, your life force, your prana. allowing the breaths to deepen and lengthen for a few rounds, really feeling that sense of cleansing on the inhale and then relaxing on the exhale. With each breath that you take, allow yourself to become more relaxed, more comfortable and more at peace. Softening from the crown of the head all the way down to the tips of the toes. Feeling the jaw and cheeks, the forehead relaxed, eyelids becoming heavy. Noticing the sense of spaciousness in the neck, the shoulders, the heart space. The arms become heavier by your side, relaxing all the way down to the tips of the fingers. Beginning to scan down the spine. Releasing and relaxing every single muscle, all the way down to the hips, buttocks. Noticing any knots and tension in the belly, releasing and relaxing the breath. Softening the hips and thighs. Just feeling those legs as they sink deeper into the mat, relaxing all the way down to the tips of the toes. Just 
noticing how that breath is loving you deeper and deeper into a state of relaxation, calm, peace. or just sense, just feel, however it is for you. Your heart chakra so just getting a sense of that heart chakra. You may work with colours, you may not. Colour is green. Allowing your awareness to be with the heart chakra, perhaps for you it's just a sense of breath in the heart space, maybe you can feel the heart beating. Visualize, sense the space around you beginning to dissolve. The room that you're in, the space outside of that room. Perhaps you imagine or sense each item dissolving in turn. to dissolve in the space around you. And even beginning, if you choose to imagine the body now dissolving, the arms and the legs and the hair, and the hips and the belly, until all you're left with image, that sense, that feeling of the heart chakra. Feel the body. 
body again in space. If you choose, you can begin to imagine, visualize, sense space around you coming back into being. Noticing yourself in the space. connected to the heart. And allow your awareness of the breath to drift back. When you're ready, take a nice big deep cleansing breath. Lean and out through the nose, start to Reawaken into that heart space in the lungs and the chest muscles. Wriggling the fingers and the toes. When you're ready, if they're not already bent, bend the knees one at a time. Bring those palms together. Bring the palms. And then place the hands over the eyes, open the fingers. Gently rubbing the cheeks and the throat. Take your time to roll it over onto your right hand side, away from the heart centre. Pushing yourself back to seated. Finish practice, inhale, big circle, palms come together, exhale, and stay. Mm -hmm. Namaste, crumps. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, if you can turn off the recording. Crumpets, crumpets actually in a recording for once. <laughs>